بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين جل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك رحمتك يا رحم الراح We have uh, توفيق to continue our study of الميزان and the point uh, that Allah uh, is going to make is the fourth point about miracles Allah says that when a miracle happens, there is a role for the spirit of the Prophet who is bringing this miracle. Al Quran yuthbetu ta'athiran fi nufus al anbiya fil khawariq. So the Prophets are not just uh, watching or observing. The miracle so that they ask Allah for example uh, please you know show these people a sign of truth of my claim and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the miracle and they just watch it like other people who are watching no the miracle happens through the spirit of the Prophet so his spirit has a role Actually, a few days ago also for another reason we had this discussion in the uh, course on Ma'arif al-Qur'an. We had a discussion about Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, and reviving the birds. Inshallah, I may, may mention later. The first ayah that Allah quotes here is from Surah Mu'min or Ghafir, verse 78. Ma kana li rasulin أن يأتي بآية إلا بإذن الله. You remember we had discussion about إذن. Whenever something great is going to happen, whenever something from the side of Allah is going to happen, we need إذن, permission from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. No messenger. can bring any sign, which means mu'jaza, illa bi'iznillah, except with his leave or with his permission. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ قُذِيَ بِالْحَقِ When Allah's command comes, then it is finalized with the observation of the truth. ف... أفاد إناتة إتيان أية آية من أي رسول بإذن الله. So this ayah in a very general way says any messenger, if he wants to bring any sign, it has to be بإذن الله, with the permission of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And this permission is a generative, is a takwini thing. It's not, you know. A kind of formality that you know for example when I want to go somewhere you know I say to people you know with your permission you know or leave I'm leaving here it's just a matter of respect <clears throat> he says uh, from this we can then understand that أن إتيان الآيات المعجزة من الأنبياء bringing these signs of Allah which are miraculous and no one can bring like them is because of something in their soul, in their ruh, in their spirit لمبدأ مؤثرا موجودا في نفوسهم so there is something in their soul that With the permission of Allah, 
متوقفون في تأثيره على الإذن with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can bring this mojiza the ex maybe it's better to mention the example of Prophet Ibrahim here because uh, it helps a lot uh, Allama rahmatullah says in the story of the birds when Prophet Ibrahim said Rabbi arni kayfa tuhyil mawta my lord show me how you revive the dead he says the question was not how the dead are revived the question was how you revive the dead so the question was not about ihya only the revival only the question was how you revive the dead so what allah did allah used ibrahim in this process of reviving the dead so Allah said take four birds take four birds mix them and put from each of them on top of four mounts or hills then call them they will quickly come to you. So when Ibrahim called them, in this way, Allah gave them life. Like when Isa alayhi salam was making from the statue of a bird, فَتَنْفُخُ اِسْتَخْلُقُ مِنَ الدِّينِ كَحَيْئَةَ الدَّيْرِ فَتَنْفُخُ فِي فَيَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِ So he was making the statue from clay, blowing into that it becomes a bird. Now Ibrahim also put them on mountains and called them and through this call which came out of the mouth of Ibrahim, they were revived. So Ibrahim then was involved in this process. So he didn't just watching that some dead are revived. As we have in another story about one of the prophets or about, you know, some say it was Ermia or other, you know. Allah talks about someone that was passing uh, by a village and so that this village has no person no inhabitant everyone was dead he said how Allah is going to revive these after they die and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him die for 100 years so his question was what? And now Yuhiyallah. How God is going to revive this? And Allah showed him how he revives. But Ibrahim's question was how you revived it. And Allah made him to understand this. So you see the difference between the questions. <clears throat> then Allah refers to magic. Magic is a reality. Not everyone who claims, you know, um, has a bit, you know, power to bring magic is a truthful person. Or, you know, not every time people have problem, they think maybe there's a magic. But in general, magic is a reality and can happen. How it works? How magic works? I have an explanation, in my humble opinion, about the way it works, and I think it's more, uh, you know, psychological. But at least what we can understand here from the Quran, from Surah Baqarah, verse 102, is that again, similar to Mu'jizah, but very much different in other aspects, but there is a similarity. 
there is a need for permission from Allah. If Allah doesn't permit, the magician cannot do anything. The story of Harut and Marut, you know this. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِ الْحَارُوتَ وَمَارُوتَ شَيَاطِينَ were teaching people magic but two angels also were teaching people magic, but they were saying this is a test. You should not use it for bad things or you should not use it without permission. They were not teaching to anyone unless they were saying we are fitna. Means you are going to be tested through us. This shows that using magic where Allah is not uh, praised is like a kufr is similar to kufr is a type of kufr <laughs> but instead of listening to these uh, angels and using magic when it is necessary needed for good purpose they were learning from these two angels what they were then using to separate between husband and wife. This also shows how much family is important, how much marriage is sacred, that it is taken as a sign of kufr to use magic to separate a husband from his wife or a wife from her husband. Of course, they were not able to defeat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or bypass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was possible with the permission from Allah. But permission of Allah doesn't mean that Allah is pleased. You know? Because there are two types of irada. We have iradiyya takwini and iradiyya tashri. Nothing happens unless Allah permits. If someone is doing good things or bad things, Allah has to permit so that it can happen. But it doesn't mean that he has approved this. Yeah? So even if someone disobeys Allah or disbelieves in Allah it cannot be without Allah's permission but this is takwini al iradatu takwini but his legislative will can be opposite to this against this so what Allah wants to bring from this ayah out is this. Uh, Allah says this ayah shows that like what we said about mu'jiza, in the case of magic also there is a role for the soul of magician. Magician's nafs is involved. And this is why Allah says, Bi'iznillah. So this iznillah is used when we have something positive, like mu'jiza, or something negative, like magic, where something spiritual is involved. But later, inshallah, we'll explain that there is a difference between miracle and magic uh, with respect to the power of the miracle the, this is something we will talk about later from this perspective they are similar that in both of them the soul or the spirit of the person who brings more or brings magic 
is involved. In other words, you cannot teach a computer a robot to do magic or to bring mojiza because there has to be a soul involved. So Allama says, Bel Jumla, this sentence is very important, the conclusions for this part. All the extraordinary acts. You remember when in the first session I talked about definition of mu'jaza. We said mu'jaza is everything which is extraordinary. And comes from a person who claims to be prophet and comes in compliance with his claim. So if he wants to give shifa, the person doesn't die extraordinarily. And comes with challenge. So kharaqul ada, we mentioned, it has to be extraordinary. So anything extraordinary, whether it's mu'jiza or sihr, magic, or karamat, something that Imams do, we don't call it technically mu'jiza. Or awliyaullah do, or someone makes a dua and this dua is working. Anything like this, all are attributed or related to mabadin nafsaniya. So there are some principles, some origins for them in the soul. So they have some psychic origins and they are related to the will of that person who brings them but the difference between mu'jiza and magic is this in the case of prophets that origin for extraordinary act is very powerful. When a prophet wants to bring mu'jiza bi'iznillah, nothing can stop it. But maybe when a magician wants to do something, someone else can stop. Allah's word, Allah's revelation, Quran, shows clearly that Al Mabda Al Mawjud Indal Anbiya Wal Rusul Wal Mu'mineen Huwal Fa'iqul Ghalibu Ala Kul Sabab. It is dominant and nothing can stop it. For example, in Surah Safat, verse 173. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ أَنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْسُورُونَ وَأَنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ ال... وَأَنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ This is a decided, a finalized word of God that our messengers are mansurun, they are helped to gain victory. And our army is winning and defeating. Or in Surah Mujadala, verse 21, Allah Allah has written down, means it is decisively decided that I and my messengers will be defeating and will be winning. Or So what we can understand, so you see how Allah is making tafsir al-Qur'an bil-Qur'an in the way that we don't expect such things can be understood. <laughs> but he is able to put these things together and make these conclusions. So he says, from this we can understand what is the root or the origin of these extraordinary acts in the prophets and messengers 
who are supported by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something beyond nature, above physical world. Because those things which are in the physical world and in this nature, they are not always possible for the, it's not always possible for them to win and defeat. Because in this physical world, anything faces lots of challenges and obstacles. Is there anything in this material world that can always succeed and can always overcome and override? No. But if something is always overriding and winning, so must be supernatural. هذا المبدأ النفساني المجرد. This origin of action, which is immaterial and is helped, is going to win the irada Allah with Allah's will. If is facing a material obstacle, it can remove the obstacle. There is no obstacle stopping it. Point five. At the same time, these extraordinary acts are attributed in the Quran to the souls or spirits of those who bring them. They are also attributed to command of God. For example, Allah says, فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ Amr sometimes means affair, sometimes means command. But here maybe it's more meaningful to say command of God. When command of God comes. Because, you know, for example, in Surah Yasin, verse 82. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah says Amruhu means his command of saying be. So when Allah decides to create something, to initiate something, to do ijad, he says kun, and there it is. So Amr means here the word of be. Now, here there is something uh, technical uh, a little bit. I'm sorry that this discussion sometimes is philosophical. When we have this concept in the Quran that for guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this book, this message is a kind of reminder, a kind of guidance for those who will. Yeah, for example, فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا Or for example, إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِمْ So, Prophet cannot force people and guide them. Yeah, Quran is a reminder. Quran is a way for guidance. But, those who will, they benefit. But then in both cases, whether it's Surah Dahra or in Surah Takbir, Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah, for example. So this is a guidance for those who will, and then Allah says, and you don't will unless He wills. What does it mean? Allah says it means that when a person wants to be guided, before that Allah must have willed his guidance. Yeah? No one can, without Allah's blessing and Allah's support and Allah's will, be guided. But 
if someone doesn't want to be guided, yeah, if someone doesn't want to be guided, here is he cannot put the responsibility on Allah and say, you didn't want me to be guided. This is not the meaning of ayah. The meaning of ayah is not that Allah wills and then you are forced to will. The meaning of ayah is that you will and this is preceded by Allah's will as a kind of permission. In other words, Allah's will is coming for completion of illat tamba but you are also part of it. So if you want to go to this direction, Allah lets you go. If you want to go to another direction, He lets you go. But if you go to this direction or that direction, in both cases, don't think you could do it yourself. But at the same time, if you make wrong decision, don't think that Allah forced you. Okay? So, Allah says, these verses show the thing that a human being has the ability to decide, to will. He has ikhtiyar, he has free will. This will not happen unless Allah wills that. What is his will? His will is that you will. <laughs> Not that his will is the end result. So that you say you forced me. <laughs> yeah. So he decided that you have freedom. And with his permission you made this choice. Yasha'a and yasha'a al-insan. So he wanted that we decide. وَيُرِيدُ إِرَادَةَ الْإِنسَانِ He wanted our irada. So, you have been given this gift of free will, but this is because of his decision. He gifted you this. So, Again, another conclusion. al umuru jami'an. Everything. Whether it is ordinary or extraordinary. Whether it is waking up in the morning that we think it is ordinary. Although everything I think is extraordinary. If you look at it carefully, everything is mu'jiza. But for us, something has to be rare. So that we think it is mu'jiza. So anything, whether it is ordinary or extraordinary, and whether it is positive, like mu'jaza, karama, dua, or negative, like sihr, all of them, they have a natural cause, but above that cause, we have something supernatural. But that supernatural doesn't quickly or you know jump to this thing always involves something natural as well something material as well so for example musa has to use this stick it's not that a dragon comes out of nowhere there is must be a stick or isa makes a statue of a bird yeah so there must be something here but a supernatural cause is on top of that. So all affairs mustanadatun fi tahakkuha ila asbabin tabi'iyya. They all are related to natural causes. And at the same time they depend on will of God, iradatullah. If Allah's will, Allah's command is not there, they cannot happen. 
Then, when it comes to mu'jaza, or when a servant of Allah prays to Allah, then there can be, in addition to the will of God, which always for every action is needed, then can be a decisive, a determined will of God for success. So here Allah has a will for making this happen. In the case of ordinary things, Allah's will might be dependent on the situation. He gives you permission, He gives you ability to decide, but He may not have decisive will that this must happen. In the case of Mu'jiza or Dua which is answered, he has a will for making this happen. Point six. According to Quran, miracles are attributed to a cause which cannot be defeated. غَيْرَ مَغْلُوب No one can stop miracles. So the difference between mu'jaza and non-mu'jaza is not that mu'jaza doesn't have a cause or you know something in this world involved etc. No, there is cause, causality, everything is there. The only thing is that in mu'jaza there is a special power coming from Allah that no one can stop it. Because you can always in the worldly and ordinary things, you can always have interactions, obstacles. Sometimes someone can do something, but then something greater happens and stops it. There is interference all the time, but here no, nothing can interfere. Even in the case of magic, there can be interference. But in the case of mojaza, nothing can interfere. So Allah says, in the case of mojaza and dua, لا يسير مغلوبا مقهورا Their cause can never be defeated. Another point which is very interesting is that mu'jiza is not a kind of argument for proving, for example, existence of God or attributes of God and things like this. Allah says, in religion, we use all these arguments. What the focus of mu'jiza is. To prove that this person is a messenger of God. So the main claim, the main thing for which mu'jiza helps is what? That this person is sent by God. Because people were sometimes questioning them. Who said you are sent by God? You are just one of us. If God had wanted to send someone, he would have sent, for example, angels. Or would have sent someone much greater than you, for example, in the way that they looked at greatness. Yeah? Why Quran is not sent down to a great person from, for example, Mecca and Medina. And they meant by great, someone who has lots of money or, you know, influence, etc. So they were questioning that God may have chosen this person and spoken to him and given him a mission. So the focus of Mu'jiza is Isbatur Risala. 
to prove that this person is messenger of God. This is the focus of Moja. Otherwise, we still in religion bring arguments for the existence of God, for you know other things. Of course, this can be also enough because if this person is sent by God, then existence of God is also uh, uh, quiet. But this is not the focus, and many times they believed in God already. He says, sometimes even Mu'ajizah was given before people ask anything. For example, in the case of Prophet Musa, right at the beginning, it started with Allah giving him some Mu'ajizah. And then Allah said, Izhab anta wa akhuka ayati. You and your brother go with my signs, with my miracles. Or Isa alayhi salam said, Rasulan ila bani Israel, anni qad jitukum bi ayatin min rabbikum. So, he says, there is no direct connection between what a prophet brings as mojiza and the teachings of religion about different issues, we can bring arguments for them, but the main focus of Mu'jizah is to prove that this person is from God. Uh, I read for you the key sentence here. إِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ وَالرُّسُولَ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَامُ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِالْآيَاتِ الْمُعْجِزَةِ لِإِثْبَاتِ الشَّيْءٍ مِنْ مَعَارِفِ الْمَبْدَئِ وَالْمَعَارِفِ the prophets and messengers didn't bring these miraculous signs to prove anything about Mabda origin or resurrection, about God, about resurrection, which Agl can understand, like unity of God, like resurrection, etc. They used uh, Arguments for Agal to be able to discover these things. But in order to show that they are from God, they brought Mu'jizah. إِنَّمَا سُئِلَ الرُّسُلَ الْمُعْجِزَةِ وَأَتَوْ بِهَا لِإِثْبَاتِ الرِّسَالَتِهِ so the reason for asking prophets to bring mu'jizah and the reason they brought mu'jizah is to prove their mission that they are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because people in different ways, as I said, questioned them being sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, I think we stop here. Maybe we need... Inshallah, uh, at least one more session to complete this discussion. But every point is beautiful and helps us with other things as well. To have a better understanding of how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship, uh, you know, covers everything in a way which is not comparable to any cause, any normal cause. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.